to be 
was born to be. Tell the world 
children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we knew. To be everybody searching for a hero. People need someone to look up to. I never found anyone to fulfill my need. A lonely place to be, and so I've learned to depend on me. I decided. Mr. Johnny Casson. Thank you. 
Wowee. Now then. Hiya. What a reception, that. <laughs> you know, it's nice to get a warm hand on your opening. And, uh, I, uh, what? I can't begin. Can you smell gas, or is it me, that? And, oh, that's me, that. And, uh, man, that'd break up a picket line, that. And, uh, it's a joy to be here on this special occasion because I've been, I've been watching the world news on telly who says Australian scientists today have discovered a foodstuff that lowers the sex drive in men. It's called wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well laugh now, it don't get any funnier. And, uh, <laughs> and tonight the Americans have offered £50 million for Osama bin Laden and Chelsea have offered £80 million. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, are you clapping me off? That'll do. And, uh, you know, I was just backstage then, grouting my jacket, and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, do you know there's a knock at the door? Why does the dog always think it's for him? And, uh, <laughs> The other night, I went to an animal rights barbecue, and, um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> The world's going by me, innit? I bought a DVD this morning, and I got a free paper with it, and, uh, <laughs> now, now. But my father told me, <clears throat> never raise your hand to a woman. He said, it leaves your groin exposed, and, uh, now. Sure, I'll just put me Dorothy back over there. And um, I don't like coming on on my own. And uh, I know it's insecurity, but that looks better than sucking a blanket on the stage. And, and, uh, I got a phone call on Friday from BT. They said, you've not paid your last phone bill. I said, don't worry about it. I've placed it in a queue. <laughs> eh? You know, I do a lot of work for hospitals. Well, I make people sick. And, uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> I had a big bypass operation, you know. It was a big bypass. Swampy were outside protesting. And, uh, <laughs> anyway. I read an ass. Do you know I've been making pastry today? Don't you get your nails clean? Look at that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I read this article in, in the hospital and it said, in a lifetime, the average man will only ever use one quarter of his brain. One quarter. So what do you do with the other quarter? <laughs> eh? <laughs> you know, you might find this difficult to take on board, but when I was a kid, I was quite ugly. And, um, <laughs> I mean, ugly, aren't it? My mother used to pull me pram and, uh, <laughs> They used to feed me with a catapult, and, uh, <laughs> Ollie, I would plug ugly. They had to put lamb chops round my neck so the dog would play with me, and, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you how ugly I was. If I'd have stayed at Michael Jackson's ranch, I'd have had my own room. <laughs> <laughs> now then. You know... <laughs> There's a knock at the door, and when this fellow opened the door, the man stood there like that with a big Bible in his hand. He said, uh, uh, can I help you? Oh, yes, he said, uh, I'm from uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, he said, come in. He went, what? <laughs> have a seat. Would you like a tea or a coffee? I'll have a coffee. He said, no, I've got some scones. Would you like some scones with strawberry jam and clotted cream? He said, thank you. Well, he came out of the kitchen, sat down, he put his tray down, he said, so, uh, what's this Jehovah's Witnesses all about, then? This fella said, I don't know. I've never got this far before. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> now, well, <laughs> what a wonderful audience. And uh, I hope you all live long enough to see the end of Wembley Stadium finished. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> uh... We drove down overnight from Blackpool and we were busy on the M1, my God. I got stuck in the asylum seekers lane. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, oh, 
I think I just got a speeding ticket then over there, yeah. And you know you're supposed to use a mobile phone when you're driving, here. And there's a woman in front of me, 80 mile an hour, mind you, blabbing away on a mobile, one hand on the steering wheel. Well, she's very dangerous. And she pulled in front of me like that, and I had to break that hard. I dropped my razor into my cornflake, you know. And... <laughs> so this old Jewish fellow's driving home one night, and his car phone goes off. <clears throat> when he picks it up, it's his wife. She said, Sully, where are you? He said, I'm on the M1 near Leeds. She said, I thought you might be now being very, very careful. There's been a flash on the television. There's one man driving the wrong way down the motorway. <laughs> he said, how do you mean one? He said, there's bloody hundreds of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't see comics like this anymore, do you? And, uh, <laughs> So this woman's on the beach at Blackpool, she says to her husband, have you seen my flip-flops? He said, we've all seen them, put your T-shirt back on. You see? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I think my bottom's hungry, it keeps trying to eat me underpants, hang on. <laughs> jockey shorts. I think jockey's still in there, isn't it? Everything's changed, hasn't it? Climate's changed. Can you remember in the 70s we had those two dreadful winters? You know, Mike and Bernie. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> eh? I don't know where we're going. I bought my wife a mood ring for her birthday and the stone changes colour depending on what kind of a mood she's in, right? When she's in a really good mood, it goes a lovely shade of turquoise blue. And when she's in a really bad mood, it leaves a big red mark on my forehead. <laughs> I don't mind being married, but the hours are too long. <laughs> I realised she was going off me last year because I had a heart attack and she wrote for an ambulance. Now, I know this is petty at my age, but I've started doing things to do here on purpose. <laughs> no, no, little things, you know, like, like in the morning, I'll wake up and that really annoys her, that. Oh. <laughs> the other morning, I knew she was up because I could hear her scraping the toast. And, uh, <laughs> thanks, Pat. And uh, I came into the kitchen and she said to me, there's only one thing can save this marriage of ours. I said, what? She said, the missionary position. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? She said, well, I'll stop here and you'll go and live in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she can be a sarcastic pig with me. And uh, I'll give you an example of her sarcasm, an IE or a EG. Eh? Six years, Catholic grammar school. And uh, <laughs> St Cuthbert's in the closet. And, uh, do you know, there's one thing, ladies and giblets, um, I, um, I realise now at my age that I didn't appreciate the finer things of going to a grammar school in the 1950s. You know, like being spanked by a middle-aged woman, you know. I know, things I'm paying good money for in Blackpool, you know. <laughs> well, before she goes to bed every night, she puts this stuff on her face, oil of ugly. And, uh, <laughs> something like that. It's working, anyway, whatever they call it, and, uh... <laughs> Now, she'd finished with that and she was just whiting her moustache out with Domestos, like... <laughs> <laughs> I was pleasant with her. I put me etcher sketch down like that, and, uh, I said to her, uh, Raquel, I said, um, <laughs> What would you really, really like for your birthday? She said, Widow's pension, please. <laughs> I changed my car last week. I've got a Reliant Robin off the road vehicle. And, um, yeah, it's a 3x3. And, uh, <laughs> can, <laughs> can I just say, ladies and grow back, can I just say at this point that it's not like me to get a crowd like this, Joe's wonderful crowd, because you come on stage some nights and the audience look like they're queuing up for the Trisha show, you know, and they're like. <laughs> 
I don't think it's my baby, no, no. <laughs> oh, well, I was having a tattoo on that there. <laughs> hey, brain donors, aren't they? And, uh, <laughs> I was coming in the stage door tonight and this lad sat down and he says to me, have you got some spare change, sir? I said, yeah, it's at home in my spare wallet. <laughs> yeah. <I'm there. laughs> he says, you don't know what it's like to be poor. I said, I do, that's why I work, lad. And, uh, <laughs> well, thank you. I'm sorry. Can't call this work, I do appreciate that, but... Um, Honestly, I appreciate it, because you've heard people say, I'm glad I'm not him. I'm him. <laughs> I've got a letter from the Reader's Digest. It said you have not been included in our latest draw. <laughs> I went to a funeral last week and I caught the wreath. And, um... <laughs> Do you know... <laughs> Do you know I've only been out with a tall girl once and I had to jack it in and uh, <laughs> uh, Now then many, many many years ago I had a blind date in Blackpool to meet this girl outside the Grand Theatre I'm stood there like that and this beautiful girl came up and I said to her my god I said are you a model? She said, no, I'm full scale. I went, <laughs> I said, you are beautiful. I said, I could live in your eyes. She said, you'd be at home. I've got a sty in one of them. She said, <laughs> I said, are you Sharon? She said, well, are you Johnny? I said, I am. She said, no, I'm not Sharon. No, no, no. <laughs> You know, a couple of weeks before I got married, I went round to my mother-in-law, which was in my, my, my fiancé's house, and uh, my mother-in-law opened the door and uh, she said, she's stopping out tonight, Johnny, but come in, have a, have a drink, lad. And my mother-in-law was quite tasty, you know, she was a bit of a stunner, and uh, she said to me, this could be your last chance, you're getting married in two weeks' time, and I've always fancied you ever since you brought you through the door. This could be your last chance. I'm going to go upstairs and get into bed, and the rest is up to you. And she went upstairs. Well, I flew out of the house, down the path like that. <laughs> I got to the gate, father-in-law stepped out from behind a tree, put his arms around me, said, congratulations, Johnny, you've passed the test. Welcome to our family. And that taught me a really good lesson in life. Always leave your condoms in your car. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, it's grand as London, isn't it? I went for a meal this afternoon in Bayswater Road, where we are, and uh, they sell paintings on the railings there. And I bought one of these original oil paintings for £100, and it was called Orgasm. And uh, when I got it home, it was a fake. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago, I was in the Territorial Army, and we'd been on manoeuvres in Scotland. And after the event, the Sergeant Major said to me, I want you in my office immediately, Casson. I went in, he said to me, I didn't see you at camouflage class this morning. I said, thank you, sir. <laughs> that was on the news as well, you know. Bob Geldof's gone into hospital tonight with hemochromatosis and crematomophobia. <laughs> he left the other two kids at home. And, uh... Have you seen these celebrities when they have babies now, they give them stupid names like Tallulah Lila, Bloody Bluebell Madonna, and Betty Kitten, and uh, Clonker Ponker. And, um, I think it was the Beckhams that started this craze. Their little child, Brooklyn, was conceived in Brooklyn in New York, so they called the kid Brooklyn. Some other big stars was conceived in India, and they called their daughter India. Some other big stars kid was conceived in Rome, and they called their little boy Rome, and they think this is new. I mean, we did this 30 years ago with two of our kids, back alley and tabletop, you know. And, uh, <laughs> so anyway. The, the computer's broken on the aeroplane. All systems have gone down. There's only the tannoy working. And the captain comes on and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem with the plane. I'm going to land it in the sea in about 40 minutes' time. I'll get you all down safely, but when I give the command, you must assume the emergency position and put your head between your legs. 
I thought, if I could do that, I'd never go out of the house. And, uh, no. No. Oh. <laughs> Am I on my own? I think not. And, um, I'll be back to give you final instructions. And he clicked off. And this beautiful woman stood up in the centre of the aisle, took a dress off, stood there in her underwear. Come on, somebody, make me feel like a real woman. And this Yorkshire man stood up and took his shirt off. said, here, I earn that. <laughs> now, ladies, don't leave here thinking I'm one of them chauvinistics, but um, men and women, we're different, aren't we? We're different, same world, different planet. And, uh, but, well, you ladies are good laughers here tonight. And, man, it's been a lovely drying day, hasn't it? And, uh, now, <laughs> Why can't life be like this? I'm, I'm coming round, I've had a bit of a tough day today. The night before last, I was in Blackpool. I went out for a drink with Frank Carson, and God, he was tired, Frank. He could hardly keep his mouth open. And uh, <laughs> Frank Carson's a wonderful comedian. You ask him. And uh, anyway. <laughs> now, we're in this pub in Blackpool. It's called The Flying Handbag. Right, now. Hmm, anyway. <laughs> Hey, they have gay weddings now, you know. I'm all in favour of gay people getting married. Why should they be happy? Hey? <laughs> We've been in about an hour and the door opened and this lad walked in, he was a punk. And this side of his hair was bright, shocking pink. This side of his hair, fluorescent lime green. And he had this bloody big purple Mohican, like, <laughs> And I was just looking at me, turned and he went, what are you looking at, fatty? Have you got a problem? I said, problem I haven't. Curiosity I have. I said, uh, I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 21. Why? I said, would you believe that? I said, 21 years ago, I said I had sex with a parrot and I think I might be a dad. <laughs> well, you're a remarkable crowd. Would you just excuse me? I'll just have a drink of water. I keep going dizzy. And uh, proper dizzy, I hope I'm poorly. And, uh, I'd hate to be all right and feel like this. And um, <laughs> This woman said to me yesterday, bye, you're putting some weight on, Johnny. I said, I know, I've had a lot on my plate recently. And um, <laughs> This tickled me on the back of this bottle. It says, this Scandinavian mineral water comes from a glacier two million years old, filtered through layers of calcium and limestone over a period of many, many hundreds of years to bring you this natural mineral water. Best before September 2006. <laughs> so this girl goes to the tattooist and she said, now, to the tattooist, for my boyfriend's 30 next week, I want to surprise him. I want you to tattoo a little butterfly on each cheek and my bottom as a surprise for him. Can you do that? He said, oh, not butterflies. Very, very difficult. I've never done butterflies. I wouldn't attempt them. He said, but I specialise in bees. He said, I'll do your bee on each cheek. If, well, she has it done. 30th birthday, she come out of the bathroom like that, she pulled an eye, she said to her boyfriend, here, what do you think of that then? He said, who the hell's Bob? <laughs> now. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you the thrill of working here tonight. And, uh, the first time I've worked at the Palladium, I was with my wife of 16 years, which is quite old for a Filipino. And, uh, <laughs> but, no, no, no. I'm, I was in the, in 1980, I was in the final of the Butlins Talent Contest, and the cabaret after the second half was Joe Longthorne, the first time I'd met him. And we've been, got on like a house on fire ever since then, and uh, he's always in everybody's prayers, and it's a joy to be here, you know? Because you don't, you can clap if you want, it's, <laughs> As if ain't it? Because you don't know what you're going to. I've got this agent, right, Crippin, and uh, <laughs> he'd book a West Indian steel band for a BMP party. And, uh, <laughs> but remember every, every, every minute of this evening, have a good drink, you know. Even if you're driving, have a drink. Go on. Meet the police with confidence, eh? <laughs> Have you ever had that when you're driving home from a night out, minding your own business, all of a sudden you get the blue light flashing in your mirror and you look in your mirror and it says, Ekilop, and do like that, eh? 
one of nature's finest laxatives, that, isn't it? And, uh, <laughs> well, I'll be very honest with you, ladies and them that followed you in. Um, I was in London a few weeks ago and I went to a gay club to lobby my MP. And uh, <laughs> we. Uh, well, I saw Tony Blair in person a bit since. Do you remember? He was on a state visit to Great Britain. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he came to Yorkshire to close a new hospital. And, uh, <laughs> uh, that's in a mess, isn't it? NHS. Do you know what that stands for? No hope of surgery. Right now. <laughs> Have you been in that Any? You have to wait for hours. I was in Any the other week. The man next to me was being treated for musket wounds. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And the nurse came out. Is there a Samuel Pepys in here? Do you get me? <laughs> Tony Blair. Now, there's a man whose judgment you can't trust, right? Tony Blair's a man who once looked across a crowded room at Cherie and said, My God, she's lovely, eh? <laughs> Have you seen the gob on her? Eh? Oh. It looked like she'd been ducking for apples in a chip pan, does it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> live and let live, eh? You live and you learn and then you die and forget it all, don't you? And, uh... So the tube's really crowded at tea time and there's a woman stood up on them hanging straps and the fellow stood behind the kids bumping into her. She said to him, would you stop pushing your person into my body, please? He said, it's not my purse, madam, it's my wage packet. She said, well, you must have been well. You've had three rises since Charlie Cross. She said... <laughs> You know, you do realise as you're getting a bit older that money's not everything in life, is it? But it keeps you in touch with your children, don't it? And, uh, <laughs> three kids we've got. We had four, but we hung one as an example. And, uh, <laughs> now, now, don't. <laughs> hey, them kids have kept us together. Oh, I will. She won't take them and I'm not having them. And, uh, <laughs> a few years ago, I'm a granddad now, he's about that big. And, uh, now, a few years ago, my youngest daughter wanted a Barbie doll for Christmas, so I went to that really big shop, uh, We Are Toys, right? And, um, well, yeah, it's near that Swedish one, that Aika. Anyway, good. And uh, I went, I said, Barbie doll, please. He said, any particular model? I said, I didn't know there was a choice. Vast. He said, that's your standard Barbie, £12.50, sir. Then you could have a themed one, like the wedding day Barbie, £75, or the divorcee Barbie, at £350. <laughs> I said, £350, divorcee Barbie. He said, oh, yeah, but you get Ken's house, Ken's car, <laughs> Ken's bank balance. <laughs> Hello. I think my wife would divorce me if she could find a way of doing it without making me happy. And, uh, <laughs> mind you, she's good in bed. And, uh, <laughs> well, till I get in. And, uh, <laughs> You know you're getting boring in bed when you're making love and you feel an ashtray in the middle of your back, don't you? <laughs> hey? We haven't got much of a sex life. <laughs> that we just lay in bed and fart at each other. Think about <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed every inch of your company tonight and... Uh, in fact, I'm going to get his photo before I wind up. And, uh, <laughs> now, can you just come in a bit for me at the edge? Of <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you why I'm taking your photo. Well, the next time I'm working in Sunderland, I can show my photo of a crowd laughing. And, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> why can't life be like this? I mean, what's gone wrong in society? Old people getting mugged, eh? You know, I'll be very honest with you, I was born in the war and my father was never at home. He was a hand grenade instructor. And, um, <laughs> he, was, 
He used to come home on leave, right? He'd take the pin out of me nappy and throw me over the settee. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> but because of that, <laughs> I mean, subsequently, um, I was... Um, I was brought up by my grandparents, and my grandmother was one of the women who got the vote with Emily Plankhurst, right? And um, she was a suffering get, one of them. <laughs> but she had to be strong, because my granddad would do it. My grandfather wouldn't go in the bomb shelters when they were dropping bombs. He'd sit there and say, if it's got your name on it, it'll get you. <laughs> if it's got your name on it. That never bothered us, but our neighbours, Mr and Mrs Doodlebug, He, uh, he never forgive them Germans. They bombed his allotment, he shelled all his peas. And, uh, <laughs> he was a nice man, my granddad. He died in his sleep at a Max Bygraves concert. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> my grandmother said he was a model husband. Unfortunately, he wasn't a working model, but... Um, <laughs> He only ever had one job, my granddad. He was a ringer out for a one arm window cleaner. And, uh... <laughs> my other granddad's still alive. He's 98 and he's a commode restorer. And, uh... <laughs> and he collects antiques and uh, he stains furniture, but he doesn't realise he's doing it. And, uh... <laughs> So you keep supporting Joe, don't you? And, and keep, we'll keep breathing, that's your first job, isn't it? Eh? Bad breath is better than no breath. And, um, <laughs> so I'm in the chemist, I said, can I have some of them Viagra tablets, please? He said, uh, have you got a prescription from your doctor? I said, no, but I've got a photograph of my wife. I said... <laughs> <laughs> this is my second wife. Oh, I'm my first wife died, she fell down a wishing well. And, um, <laughs> I didn't know they worked either. And, uh, <laughs> my first wife was way too young. She was Chinese. And, uh, <laughs> listen. <laughs> She's not speaking to me at the moment, my wife, because I didn't open her car door. And no, I panicked. I opened mine and swam to the surface. You know that. <laughs> I heard her telling her pal the other week that I don't surprise her like I used to do when we were younger, so last Friday I surprised her. I took her out for coffee and biscuits. <laughs> it's the first time she's been a blood donor, but I... Uh... <laughs> so I'm sat on the bed the other day doing my crossword puzzle and my wife come out of the shower unit like that, because we all change as we're getting older, don't we? Do you know what my wife's got between her boobs nowadays to try and turn me on, eh? Her belly button. <laughs> And she stood in front of the wardrobe mirror. <laughs> she said to me, tell me the truth. My chin's sagging, isn't it? She said, my boobs are sagging. I know that. I've got a little pot belly and my legs aren't what they used to be. She said to me, can't you give me a compliment? I said, you've got very good eyesight. I said, you've got... I went for a lovely meal in so before I came in here and the chicken was brilliant. I said to the fella, can I have a word of this chef? He come out and said, can I just say, sir, that was the nicest chicken I've ever tasted in my life. I said, how did you prepare the chicken? He said, I told it straight, you're going to die. He said, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so this travelling salesman checks in his hotel bedroom, sits down, puts his case on the floor and there's a visiting card by the phone. He picks his card up and it reads, Mobile Erotic Thai Masseurs, in brackets, will visit. He thinks, why not? Down his little voice went, hello. He said, right, I'm at the Queen's Hotel, room 106. I want you at 10 o'clock tonight, suspenders, stockings, peekaboo, bra. He said, I want handcuffs, whips, KY, jelly, poppers. He said, I want every kinky sex toy you've got. This voice went, press nine for an outside line, <laughs> sir. Thank you. Enjoy, Joe. Good night and God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Johnny Cass, and we'll see you in about 20 minutes 
But don't forget, there's loads of things, merchandise out there for you, DVDs. What can I say? Let's hear it one more time. Mr. Johnny Casson. Thank you. In my life, 
I have someone who needs me Someone I've needed so long For once unafraid I can go where life leads me Somehow I know I'll be strong For once I can touch What my heart used to dream of Long before I knew That someone warm like you Could make my dreams come true Yeah, yeah For once in my life I won't let sorrow hurt me Not like it suited me before For once I have someone I know won't desert me I'm not alone anymore For once I can say This is mine, you can take it Long as I know I have love I'm gonna make it For once in my life Oh, there's someone who needs me The band On drums, Mr. Paul Smith. Yes, for once I can say this is mine, you can say. If the sun should tumble from the sky If the sea should suddenly run dry If you love me, really love me Let it happen, I won't care If it seems everything is lost I will smile, never count the cost If you love me, really love me Then whatever happens, I won't care Should I catch a shooting star? Should I bring it where you are? If you want me to, I will you know, you can set me any task, I'll do anything you ask, if you lonely love me still, and when at last our life on earth is through, I will share eternity with you. Should I catch a shooting star? Should I bring it where you are? If you want me to, I will. Last, 
Our life on earth is true I will share eternity with you If you love me, really love me Then whatever happens I won't Teeth, dear, and he shows them pearly white. Just a jackknife has all my keys, dear, but he keeps it somewhere around here. When the shark bites, oh, scarlet billows, living in his red. 
she close snow Where the zone might keep the dead So they'll never, never know trace of scholar On the sidewalk one Sunday morning yeah. Lies about body had so in life Someone sneaking, creeping around the corner Don't you know, here's that Mackie Mackie back in town My, my Louie Miller He split the scene, babe After drawing out from all my stash Now Mackie spins just like some pimp, babe Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say it's um, a great pleasure, a privilege, an honor to be, well, to be somewhere at least. <laughs> this year, um, I will keep it quick, because I'd like to be down too long. Well, it depends. I mean, just saying, we don't want to be down, down. And of course, it is nice to be here tonight. And, um, <laughs> I was practically born here, love, dear. And uh, the thing is, of course, as I got older, I sort of tempered down a little bit. And uh, you see me dancing, you see me dancing. And, uh, <laughs> but it is nice to be here tonight, Mr. Longthorne. Um, and is it you doing well? Yes. Yeah. It's only me, you know. I'm only only... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's a number that um, I love it. I hope you enjoy it. I will love you As I love you all my life Every moment spent with you Makes me more content with you And just as you are You are all I would pray for And all what you are is what I wake up each day for, darling. Every single touch and tingle of your door, and every kiss from you to me. Makes it all so new to me Each one warmer than the one before As I love you more And more and more Oh, 
touch and tingle. Now, baby, don't you know I adore? And every kiss from you to me makes it all so new to me. And each one more. That's an old chant, that one. That's an old chant. In Romany terms, you say chanting, of course. He's singing, but it's old English when you look at it. So, oh, God, God Miss Jones, don't really start. I can oh, no, I put a little bit in as well, because I thought I'd put a little bit in. And a little bit of that. <laughs> no, it is. That's so nice to be, ladies and gentlemen. So many, when you think about it, artists over the years, there's a great big mirror as you look, uh, and we, before you come on, before we sort of stand there. And you can't help but thinking, all the people who've actually, probably not, not one of them have, <laughs> but I think the thousands of thousands of stars that have been on this wonderful Palladium stage, uh, of, of, it's, it's the thrill to be, isn't it, isn't it nice, the atmosphere? And, yeah, it actually, it actually, it But you can't think, think, you know, Bruce Forsyth, Jimmy Tarbock, and many, many more. And I'd like to do a few of my favourites, if I may, starting with a lady who's now a dame, ladies and gentlemen, the great Shirley Bassey. Thank you. I love you all. The minute you walked in the joint, I could see you were a man of distinction, a real big spender, good-looking, so refined. Wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? Don't let me get back to the point. I don't pop my cock for every man I see. Hey, big spender. I love you. I like it. It's wonderful to be back here at the Bleeding you know? I love it, darling. I love it. Must be the champagne. I don't know what I... But um, it's wonderful to be here tonight. And if I may, I'd like to sing a song now with a great friend of mine. She has a bit of a sort of a... And a great friend of mine. His name's Tom. And he's a wonderful singer and dancer. He dances like this. The song's called Something when it goes... Something like this. Hit it. Fleming, hell, huh? Something in the world, he moves. Sing. I trust me like no. Something in his style that shows me I don't want to leave him now. You know I believe in how And somewhere in a smart soul And all I have to do is think of her oh, oh, oh. Something in her eyes Show me, yeah. 
Okay, anybody's favorite singer? Anybody's? Sammy Davis. Sammy Davis. Dorothy Squires. Dorothy Squires. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's do this. We'll do a tribute to Dorothy Squires because Dorothy, because Dorothy was a huge name here at the London Palladium. She was indeed, and she still is in my head. A uh, great singer. And, you know, from the 30s, when you think of the career that Warren had and everything, and Roger Moore and everything, that was sad, but happened. But she kept on going, and she was. I thought she was a great singer. Did you, ladies and gentlemen? Great, the first song of her. And uh, so I'd like to do this tribute to Dot, with a bit of a twist, and introduce Ken Dot, as well. <laughs> okay, boy.
say hello to Steve Lee. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. There you are, you see? You never can tell. Okay. <laughs> Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Sound I don't know I'm being foolish I don't know if I've been wise But there's something that I must believe in Cause it's there when I look in your eyes here, yeah, love is in the air, in the thundering of the sea. Oh, yeah. Love is in the air, in the whispering of the tree. And I don't know, I'm going crazy. I don't know if I know the rules. But it's something that I must believe in. Cause it's still when I reach out for you. Singers, Lee Birds, ladies and gentlemen. And our great brass section, ladies and gentlemen. Lovers in the air, in the whispering of the trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lovers in the air, and I'm nearly on my knees. You see, I don't. Cause it's there when I reach out for you And you, and you, and you Come on, let's see it Yeah, love is in the air Whoa, 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 Love is in the air Yeah, love is in the air Six quid on it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the tri tribute now to the voice that belongs to Mr. Neil Diamond. Hello again. Hello. Just come to say hello. It's good to love you like I do, and I feel this way when I hear you say hello. Ah, maybe it's been crazy, and maybe I'm to blame. Ah, but I put my heart above my head and let me tell 
tell you who we've been through it all. You love me just the same. And when you're not here, I need to hear. Come on, come on, baby. Hello. To say hello, I can't sleep at all tonight, and I know it's late, but I just couldn't wait. You know, la 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 la. Hello, my darling. I can't begin to know it But that I know It's going strong, baby Ah, oh, was in the spring Then spring became the summer Who would have believed We're going strong, baby Ah, oh, hands Such It's a nice place, Las Vegas, but it's not the same without the Rat Pack, somehow. Papa crying out loud. She gets too hungry for dinner. Right? She adores the theater, but don't ever go late. And she doesn't bother about bombs that she hates. Ah, this is why the lady is a tramp She likes the free, oh, press that wind in her hair Such life without care, oh, she's broke And that is all, it's California, it's cold and it's down, yeah That's why the lady, that's why the lady, that's why So I face the final curtain. Oh, my friends, I'll say please, I'll state my case. Oh, which I'm certain I have lived a life that's full. Oh, I traveled each and every my way. Oh, but more, much more than this. We met it our way. For what is a man? What has he got? If not. 
It was my way. Thank the Anthony Nolan from for uh, and on the and the nurses that do all the jobs that they do and the doctors and scientists and the list goes on and on and on. But you give a nice round of applause to all those people for helping together. <laughs> I'd like to sing a song, ladies and gentlemen, for a dear dear friend of mine, Mrs. Pat Man Rudy Mancini, who's in this evening. Give her a nice round of applause. She, And this is a song to Rudy. It goes like this. You never know just how much I miss you. I still could not hide my love for you. And you are to know, for haven't I told you so? Went with you Now I speak your name In my every prayer If there is Some other way To prove that I love you I swear I don't know how You'll never know if you don't If you don't know by now
you ought to know Forever and I told you so A million or more times You went away And my heart Went through that door With you Now I speak your To prove that I love you I swear I don't know how You'll never know If you don't know We need, uh, we must have Johnny Mathis fans in the theatre. This is why I once actually was doing a, a royal show, a royal variety performance, and I met Johnny uh, Mathis uh, behind the stage and for the first time, and what a sweet, sweet man. And he did something with the audience which I thought was marvellous. He uh, sort of joined in, asked him to join in a song, When a Child is Born. Do you know the song? If you don't, you will the first time now, as soon as I do. Mm -hmm. All across the land goes a brand new moon. This comes to pass when a child is born. It's so Must come to sometime soon, somehow. For a spell or two, no one seems so alone. This comes to pass when a child. Chairman, I'll just uh, have a little dip of this and a bit of that. I like to impersonate a man who, this, this one kills me, I'll tell you, no man about anything else. <laughs> this one, but it's, it's, it's nice to do, it's nice to sort of get it off your chest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if we're all everybody's, everybody's happy, Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barry White. All right, baby. I love you, love you, love you. I, I,
need to know that you will always be the same old someone that I love. Oh, baby, and what would it take if you believe? Start. Oh, baby, I just want someone here yeah, that I can talk to, yeah. I love you just the way you are. Yes, the way you are. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to then try and uh, sing you. Well, I'm going to sing you it, whether it's the right words or not. <laughs> it goes like this. To dream. To fight the unmeetable foe, to try when your arms are too weary, to reach where the brave dare not go. The unrightable wrong And to love pure Chased from afar To try When your arms are too weary To reach The unreachable store This is my Follow that star No matter how hopeless No matter how far To fight for the right Without question or pause To be willing to march into it And my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest, but just not yet. And the world will be better for this than one man torn. Covered the scars, steal the stones with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable stone.
Thank you, I love you too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I'd like to now uh, say it's been. Uh, are you any in person? Anybody you'd like to see sort of. Okay, it's. Oh. Which one? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's unanimous. Perry Como. Sun turning. Don't say a word about tomorrow forever. Oh, there's no need to watch the bridges that were burning. Lay your in Blackpool tonight. Upon my pillow, lay your own intended body close to mine. You hear the whisper of oh, the raindrops flow. Go on, do you know? Stopped against the window and make believe you love me one more time for the good time for the good time for the good time. What can I say? This next song was written by a dear, well, a friend of mine now, I hope, anyway. I'd like to uh, say a special thanks to Mr. Don Black for writing, for his writing skills and all the wonderful. He's got a great family as well. A full lot of them, lovely people, and it's nice to, nice to know them. I'd like to, if I may, do one of these special songs. This was made a huge hit by the fantastic Saturday Mist, Matt Monroe. <laughs> To have time to devote to me Everyone I saw Swore they knew me Once upon a star Things I did Couldn't buy a seat I was celebrity Celebrities would die to me I've had every accolade Start on me, and so you see. If I never sing, I know the song, it wouldn't bother me. I've had my share. If 
upon a song Frame citations hung on every wall I've got a scrapbook full of quotes I can't recall them all There was a time when I felt all the world belonged to me And so you see If I never sing I know If I never sing 